lovelies and welcome to Crystals and Coffee. Thank you for joining me. Had a uh, bit of a break because I had some school holidays here so my boys were home. So apologies for that but I am back now with um, episodes every week for the next few weeks. So today we're going to be talking about recognising burnout. So um, we're going to be talking about how it manifests, what can bring it on, um, and maybe some ways that you might be able to begin to fix it as well. Um, but first of all, before we get into it, I just want to give a shout out to my newest patron, uh, Derricka Evans. Thank you very much for uh, joining me over on Patreon and becoming a patron for Crystals and Coffee. Um, Patreon is where I host um, exclusive episodes of Crystals and Coffee podcast. There are also monthly uh, video vlogs over there, Q and A's, um, and as time goes on, there'll be more and more exclusive content over there. So if you want to check out um, how to go about joining that, then I'll put a link in the description of the podcast um, over to Crystals and Coffee on Patreon. So, okay, back to talking about burnout. What is burnout and how does it manifest? So, typically speaking, when you when we say that we're burned out, it means that we've been doing too much and feeling exhausted and just don't have any space to carry on with other things and we just feel completely overloaded. And it can manifest itself in a lot of ways that if you're burned out quite often, you may have started to pass off as normal um, because it's how you feel most of the time. I've done it. I actually end up um, ended up doing this quite frequently um, because it just, I don't know what it is, but maybe it's just something in the way that I am that just takes on too much, maybe a bit of a people pleaser um, and need to kind of reassess my own boundaries, which are things that we're going to talk about in today's episode. So ways that we can start to recognize that we might be getting towards burnout is um, fatigue for what would seemingly seem like as much as you you try and rest you, you still feel lethargic and um, low energy and you just don't have any kind of get up and go um, and the same with tiredness like regardless of how much you sleep or how much you feel like you've been sleeping you're still tired all the time um, you can be quite irritable, um, which again comes with lack of sleep, lack of rest. It can give us quite a short fuse and make us very irritable and snappy. Um, your appetite can change uh, from one extreme to the other. You could end up wanting to binge on lots of sugary um, comfort food, things that make you feel, um, well, make you feel comfort, really make you feel um, good at the time and then maybe not so good afterwards. Or you may lose your appetite. You may end up feeling like you don't want to eat at all. And I've experienced both um, recently. Uh, but again, if you've been listening for a while, you'll know that I've been trying to sell my house. Um, it still hasn't sold. And it's only been, I mean, okay, fine. In the grand scheme of things, it's not been epically long. It's been on the market for four months. And that was over Christmas and New Year. So maybe I'm being a little bit impatient. But... Um, it just brings with it a lot of stress because I want it sold and I want to move on and I can't until somebody wants to buy my house. So being anxious about that um, and then obviously trying to keep the house tidy, having it ready for viewings when people have come around to see the house and just always feeling a little bit on edge waiting for a phone call from my estate agent can get on top of you, um, on top of everything else of normal life, of looking after my boys, running a home, um, doing my job. Um, everything else, it, it gets too much and um, it happens to all of us and we can end up feeling burned out. And if this has been happening for a long time, like I said, you end up feeling like, well, this is just normal. This is just how it has to be. Not necessarily so. Actually, not necessarily so. It doesn't have to. Um, there are ways that no matter how futile it might seem, there are ways that you can begin to manage it. Um, you other ways some other ways that also you might find the way you're feeling when you're feeling burned out is the need to want to maybe stay at home stay in familiar places and stay sheltered maybe not wanting to socialize just staying in your own space which makes you feel safe you can become uh, maybe hyper aware or hypersensitive i know this happens to me 
um, when I get anxious is that the slightest loud noises or bright lights start to affect me and I just become really highly attuned to things that are around me almost to the point of it being uncomfortable and sometimes it does become uncomfortable and I basically have to shut myself in a dark room um, and that's when I know it's time to do something because if I don't step in and do something then it's just going to snowball and get worse and um, that's why I'm talking to, to you guys about it today because I think it is something that is very common most of us go through it and there are ways of being able to deal with it it might take a while but if you recognize the issue and you know that you want to try and fix it that's the biggest first step you can take so that's why we're talking about it today so things that can bring on all of these feelings as I've been mentioning it's too much at once burning the candle at both ends trying to deal with work family social um commitments maybe you've got studying in there as well there might be external factors such as having to care for other people care for other family members you there may be um trauma that you're dealing with there may be bereavement that you're dealing with um, it could be illness that you're dealing with, you could have financial issues, all of these things and a combination of these things just end up going on top of each other and you might just feel like you're being crushed under the weight of it. Um, and even if you don't have any of these, you, you might be sat there thinking, well, I feel like this, but I don't have anything major going on. Maybe I shouldn't be feeling this way. That's not true either because there's sometimes when you might if you're trying to rationalize it, think that everything is, is fine, why am I feeling this way? But we can sometimes put this pressure on ourselves. We can overthink things, overanalyze things, put unnecessary pressure on ourselves. It isn't coming from any other place but within us of what things that we feel that we must do. And in the end, we put too much on ourselves for no reason and we just end up not being able to cope with it. And this comes from a whole lot of shoulds. I should be doing this. Well, this hasn't happened to me, so I should be okay. Or, um, but if I don't do, like, exactly, oh, like, I should do this, like, I should be able to do that. Oh, I should be able to do all this together. It's fine, everybody else can. FYI, they can't. They're going through the same things that you are. We're all human. Um, so yes, granted, there are people who, um, things we're going to be talking about today can set boundaries and maybe manage things um, a bit different. Maybe they've got time management um, skills or things they've put into practice, which may have taken them years to master, but they will still feel like this. This will still happen. There is no foolproof way of eradicating burnout forever because that's just not how life works. The important thing is, is to be able to recognize when it's happening and take steps to alleviate it or be able to manage yourself through it that is the key thing to to realize here it's not that you're going to be able to eradicate it from your life and everything's going to be perfect because that's just that's just not realistic so um we end up having a whole lot of of shoulds because society says we should be able to do this my mother says i should be able to do this my boss says i should be able to do this um and it's a difficult habit a mindset to break when you get into this shouldness because even if there aren't a lot of people telling you you end up telling yourself that you should be doing it like oh I should be able to do this well who's actually told you that or is it just um, an idea that you formed and then put that pressure on yourself that you should be able to do it when no one's actually expecting it of you except for you so it's an easy trap to fall into we all do it and it can get a bit much. So that word should is, it's not one of my favourite words, let's just say that, because it has a lot of connotations to it and um, it's not always good. So where you can start with fixing this feeling or at least starting to recognise it and manage it is the first thing you need to do above all is give yourself a break whenever you can fit it in for as short or as long it it doesn't have to be any set time it's just enough time for you to feel like you can breathe you need to be able to stop for a second because there's no point in trying to tackle what's going on without taking that step back first and just 
breathing and taking a clear view of what's happening. When you're caught up in the midst of it, it's going to be impossible to try and figure it out because it you're just not going to be in the mindset. You're not going to be able to do it. So you need to give yourself a break and it can be it, it, it can be something as small as just half an hour just to maybe just go for a walk on your own, shut yourself in a room, turn all your devices off, um, just somewhere where you feel that it's you can just not be interrupted and allow yourself to feel a bit calm and just gather your thoughts a bit and um, and take a bit of a break. Now, half an hour is a very short amount of time, so that would be an absolute minimum. If you can take um, an evening or a couple of hours in the afternoon or something or at the weekend, all the better that you have some time maybe to just um, go for a walk, empty your mind, be a bit mindful, take in things that are going around on around you and not letting trying not to let all of these other thoughts r- like run ragged through your mind um or like i say shut yourself in a room you don't want to be interrupted and you just want to chill out um because i'm looking out my window and going for a walk is not an option here at the moment if you're in the uk you'll know what i mean the weather here is horrendous it's not stop raining for i don't know over two weeks and it's freezing cold, and it's really windy, and it's just ugh, it's just horrible. We have storm after storm after storm at the moment, and it's ick. It's not nice at all. We had one brief two-hour window of sunshine yesterday, and everyone thought that this is it. This is brilliant. It must be spring. No, 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 no. It's horrible. So going for a walk maybe isn't top of my list, but certainly um, having my husband occupy my sons for a little while and sitting up in my room maybe for a couple of hours with my journal or my oracle cards or just napping is definitely up there on the list to try and take some uh, take some time out. So there's no excuses with this step, by the way. It's absolutely necessary. You will not be able to um, focus unless you take a break. We all need it. Again, like I say, we're human. We need to recharge. So You need to take care of yourself. So that means listening to your body. And if you need to sleep, sleep. If you need to eat, eat. If you need to drink, drink. Um, You need to do these things. Um, They're not luxuries, they're necessities. And they are things that you need to do, no matter how hard you feel like it is to fit in. Um, Again, it's, it's key to breaking that mindset and breaking that cycle is to start to recognize the signs that your body is trying to give you and and, and maybe trying to listen to them um, bit by bit, trying to squeeze bits in here and there. You don't need to make all of a sudden make a radical change thing. I'm dropping everything. I'm not doing anything anymore. It's just about recognizing the signs and starting to consciously want to do something about them. That is what this is about. So another way of once you've taken your break, you've had a little bit of a rest, and you've eaten something, you've drank something, you're feeling a little bit better, then one of my favourite things that I have spoken about a lot in the last few weeks is um, doing some reflection work. And that basically what I mean by that is just getting some perspective, uh, taking that step back and looking at what's going on and see what, and try and figure out what's actually happening. So one of the easiest ways to do this is just not to overthink it and it's just to like kind of splurge everything out so like writing it all down write down a list of everything that you feel is a bit of a pressure at the moment no matter how small how big list it all down get it out get it out of your mind onto paper and um yeah no in no particular order just list all the things that you just that are just making you feel under pressure at the moment or you feel that you need to do commitments that you need to fulfill everything that you just feel is on top of you at the moment, list it down. And then once you've done that, hopefully that in itself will start to make you feel better because you can then start to see it and um, make sense of it rather than it all just being crammed up inside your head. Then you need to, and you can do this at a separate time if you want to step away from it. You don't have to do it all in one go again. It's all about working at your own pace. Um, This is managing your personal burnout. It's It's not copy paste for everybody. So once you have your list in your um, of all your pressures that you've written down, then I want you to look down them and be brutal, be brutally honest 
and mark out which ones are actually must do's. Which what like for instance, you have to go to work, you have to take your children to school, things like that. Things that you absolutely must do on a daily basis or what you're doing in your life. Um and no bending the rules, I mean literally have to do. No not this word should doesn't need to come into it. It's musts. So there will be things, there will be things on there that you must do, but I am willing to bet that there's a lot of things on that list that are not must do's, that they are things that you're doing in addition. So they're not necessarily things that don't need to be done, but they're not things that have to be done on a daily basis all the time, such as going to work, buying food, cooking dinner. Those things have to be done. So it's important to mark them out because those are things that you need to make time for. And then go down and be brutally honest the other way. Without thinking of, of the overthinking it too much, mark out things that aren't absolutely essential for your well-being, for your daily life, affect your family directly. So these are maybe things that you feel like you're under pressure to do from other people or you're being a people pleaser, or you're trying to um, commit to too much, or you've taken on three evening exercise classes that you can't really fit in, so maybe you should only do two or one. Things like that. You need to kind of start crossing things out and saying, actually, do you know what? Don't need to do that. Don't need to do that. And you're immediately eliminating things from your list. So that's, um, that's the start of that reflection process. And then... Once you've got your head around that, which again, I'm not saying you're going to do it all in one session. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's something you might need to revisit. It's about changing mindset. It's never an overnight thing. It takes time. So again, another thing that you shouldn't, you don't need to put pressure on yourself is to do this straight away. It's going to be a work in progress. What's important is that you recognize there's an issue and you're consciously working towards fixing it. That again, that's the message. So then looking at what's left on your list, your absolute musts, other things that you would like to do, and then things that you've eliminated. Things that you've eliminated, that's it. They're, 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 they're eliminated. They're not in this next bit. But then but then you need to put some boundaries in place. And these boundaries can only come from you. They have to be comfortable for you because if you if they aren't, you're not going to keep to them. So there are things that you're going to need to do. Now, these can be time boundaries. So you can say, so like if if working into the evening at home is becoming a problem, if you work from home, then you need to give yourself a boundary of a cutoff time and say, I will not work past that time. Be a real, be realistic. So you're not feeling, so you're not going to like fail at the first hurdle and say, right, after that time, work is off. I'm not doing it. Any messages, emails, they wait till the following morning. The same as if you were in an office and, um, or, a, or you work in a shop, it closes at a certain time. You can't just rock up at seven o'clock to a store that closed at half five and say, oh, can I just nip in and get something? It doesn't happen. So you can do the same with your work if you're working at home, um, is to put in a boundary and say, look, if I get messages and emails after, say, 6, 6.30 in the evening, they're not going to be replied to till the next day. And once that starts happening and people who are messaging you maybe after hours start to realise after a certain time they don't get replied to the next day, then you'll find that they'll stop messaging. If you've been replying at 10 at night as soon as someone, a message comes in, people people don't know your circumstances they're just going to assume you're around so they're going to keep messaging you late thinking oh they're going to reply to me because because they normally do so you need to set the boundaries other people don't know what's going on in your life so this is up to you so set yourself a boundary a cutoff point where you're not going to work past um there may be um exterior things that you might be you might have um family commitments or um extended family with asking for favors or can you help me with this can you come around with this could you just squeeze me in on your way home from work could you come help me with this now there's nothing wrong with wanting to be helpful and helping your family but there is something wrong when it's detrimental and has a knock-on effect onto you because if they knew that it was going to affect things in a bad way for you they wouldn't want you to do it but if you just put on a smile and say yeah sure that's okay then they don't think that's a problem so they're just going to keep asking so again you need to start putting in boundaries and people aren't going to hate you for it 
believe me, this is a lesson that I have learned in the last year, is I was someone who didn't have any boundaries and I would try to help everybody and it started to break me. And I had a session with my um, with my coach and we did some boundary talking with her and it was really difficult to try and start because again, I didn't want to upset anyone. And But then once I started to do it, everyone adapted. It wasn't a big thing. And it just, because they never knew that there was an issue and I didn't actually have to confront them and say there was an issue. I just started to tweak. Um, if somebody asked me, I would say, yeah, that's fine. I'm free on and give them a time rather than just say, oh yeah, I'll come around straight away. I'd be like, look, I'll do that for you, but it's going to have to wait till say Thursday. And they'd be like, yeah, okay, cool. I'll see you Thursday. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, you, it, you create pressures for yourself and you kind of think, oh, well, if I don't do it immediately, they're going to be really mad. It's like, they're not. But if you say you're going to do it immediately, they're not going to say no because they want your help. So um, boundaries that you put in for yourself are really, really important. So that again, this is some, I guess something that's going to take time. It took me months to get my head around this and feel comfortable with it. But, um, and, but now that time has gone by, I, I feel so much better because I don't feel like I have to, the whole jump how high thing anymore, which is completely self-inflicted, self-imposed on me. No one did it. And it might be through your reflections that you may start to realize that yourself too. So as this is crystals and coffee, there are also crystals that can help you when you're going through burnout. So if you need some... Sorry, I, there was a complete little glitch there because somebody knocked on my front door. I think I'm going to have to get a little sign and say, do not disturb on my front door. Anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> um, crystals that can help you with um, feeling burned out. Um, this is so that you've got a little bit of an energy boost, things that can help you when you're trying to do this reflection, when you're trying to relax, or just on a daily basis to try and control how you're feeling. So um, there's five crystals that I'm going to, to talk about now, very very briefly. We have um, Blue Lace Gate, beautiful stone, very lovely calming blue color, and the overriding feeling from this crystal is calming. So if you need calming down, then Blue Lace the Gate is a really helpful stone for that. Then there's Amethyst, which really helps with rest and relaxation. It helps with de-stressing, um, releasing tension, and it can also help you sleep. Um, there's Hematite, which is great for grounding. Um, it, it will help you feel a little bit more in balance and grounded to the earth. There's Lepediolite, which is really helpful with anxiety. And an old favorite, clear quartz, because that really helps with gaining clarity and helps you to reassess and reevaluate your situation. So those five crystals will be really helpful throughout this entire process and maybe think ones that you want to keep with you on a daily basis. So overall, it, it might take time and no doubt there needs to be there'll need to be changes internally and externally um, or both um, to help you to kind of ease your way through feeling burned out and how to help control it if it begins to happen again. So start slowly. It is a process, but start with intention. The intention is there um, and it, it to take control of what's happening um, and do those reflections, list your pressures, see what are your must do's, what aren't your must do's and then start to um, place your own boundaries and be prepared for it to be a process. It's not going to be an overnight change. So um, as always, um, feel free to comment um, or follow or message me on my socials, the link on Instagram and Facebook, the links are below. Um, I love to hear from you. I love to have your questions. I love to have your feedback. Um, and again, you can check out my Patreon. There's a new exclusive episode going up there on there today. Um, we are doing a chakra series over there. So we're talking all about the root chakra and the importance of being grounded on the exclusive episode over on Patreon today. Um, and there will be a new vlog next week too. Um, uh, it's going to be the 
the of a March vlog about crystals I've been using, um, some new things that, some new books that I've got, um, going into the new season and things like that. So if you want to check that out, again, the Patreon link is in the description, or you can just go to patreon.com and search for crystals and coffee. So thank you very much for listening today. Um, we've gone on a little bit longer than usual, but I think it was important to get all of that out um, about recognizing burnout because it's something that happens to us all. And there are ways that you can try and control it for yourself as well so I hope you find that helpful um and like I said if you have any questions then you know where I am on social media and I will be back next week with another episode in the meantime take care and I'll speak to you soon